Claire Schmidt, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have a nice conversation with you today. We're going to be exploring the results of two recent reports from All Voices, the organization that you lead. Uh, the first report is Workplace Wrongdoing, and the second is Employee Feedback. Uh, those two reports have a lot of really great insights, so it's going to be a fun dialogue around those concepts and, and what your organization has found. As we get started, I wanted to share Claire's bio with everybody. Claire Schmidt is the founder and CEO of All Voices, a platform that enables anyone to anonymously report sexual harassment and workplace issues directly to company leadership. Before founding All Voices, Claire served as a Vice President of Technology and Innovation at 20th Century Fox. In 2010, she helped found and lead Thorn Digital Defenders of Children, a nonprofit organization which deploys technology in innovative ways to fight child sex trafficking. During her five years at Thorn, Claire ran all programmatic work, spoke at the White House, the State Department, Stanford University, and led a task force of more than 30 major technology companies, including Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Microsoft. Claire graduated from Stanford with a degree in economics in 2000. Um, and six, she was the curator and vice curator of the World Economic Forum's Global Shapers Los Angeles, and in 2015 won the Mike 50 Award for her work at Thorn. Uh, what an incredible background, uh, such amazing accomplishments. I don't know how old you are, but you look incredibly young uh, to be accomplishing so much. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's uh, kudos to you uh, I, and, and doing such important work dealing with sexual harassment, workplace issues, sex trafficking. I mean, uh, man, th th that's important work. And I really appreciate all the good work that you're doing. Uh, before we launch into the conversation about your two uh, reports, anything you would like to share with listeners by way of background or personal context? No, I think uh, you did a great job. I mean, I think the thread kind of throughout my career has been focused on using technology to make the world a better place. That's just what I'm really passionate about. And so um, thank you for sharing all of my background and experience. Um, but that's really my kind of mission statement in life. Yeah, well, excellent. Well, let's launch right on in. Uh, there's a lot to discuss. You um, and All Voices has put out uh, just recently, the workplace wrongdoing report, and actually the employee feedback report that will come out officially in a couple of weeks. But you get a little, you're going to tease it a little bit here today. Uh, let's start with the workplace wrongdoing report. Uh, what can you tell us about some of the key findings and what that means for organizations and their leaders? Yeah. So, um, as just a bit of background about All Voices, um, we've built an anonymous reporting platform for employees to speak up in the workplace about issues that they experience. And as we all know, issues can really mean anything. Um, it can be feedback, it can be questions, it can be concerns, um, it can be more serious issues like sexual harassment. So we really wanted to get a sense um, we've been doing this for a few years now. We've relied on kind of the data we've seen out in in the world over the past few years to um, kind of highlight where we should be focusing and what the biggest um, issues or areas of improvement are for employees. And we realized we really wanted to do our own survey to try to get a sense of what is the current state? Um, the world is changing so quickly. We just saw so much happen over the past year with COVID-19 and um, with the, I think, acceleration of um, the anti-racism movement, which was really important. Um, and that's, I think really took off in May. And so there's just been so much change lately that we wanted to get a sense of what are employees experiencing today as it relates to, you know, negative experiences that they have in the workplace. Um, so we surveyed about a thousand people, um, and we wanted to get a sense of, are they reporting these issues? So when they witness something um, that we would describe as wrongdoing, um, whether it's, you know, an ethical issue or fraud or sexual harassment or mistreatment or bullying, it kind of all fits into that bucket. Um, are they reporting it? Um, if you look at different sort of, uh, levels of tenure of employees are less experienced employees, more willing to report or less willing to report, um, when they do report, are these issues actually resolved? Um, does it go anywhere? Because we know that one of the reasons that people are hesitant 
to report workplace wrongdoing from all the data we've seen historically is that they fear retaliation um, or they worry that it's not, nothing's gonna come out of, of it. So they will have sort of risked uh, their career in a sense, or at least this particular job um, and not even seen change occur as a result. So we wanted to ask about that. We wanted to ask about um, anonymity um, because we have built an anonymous reporting platform. So would anonymity help them um, when they're considering whether or not to report? Would it help encourage them to report? Um, and then we just asked about whether they really perceive that their employer wants them to report issues in the first place, right? Because we're coming in with this hypothesis that companies do want to and do need to know about, you know, really serious situations that are happening in, in their company. And they want to know about that before, um, before it, you know, it's in the press or before they get sued or they get called out on social media. Um, so we wanted to ask whether employees perceive that um, their employers want them to speak up about things. So that was kind of the, um, the universe of questions that we asked. And we got some really interesting findings back um, as a result. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for framing those questions. And I'm excited to hear about the findings. Um, and let me just say, you know, we, we are in this, 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 the current landscape and technological kind of ecosystem and free flowing, you know, information, like long gone are the days where you can just kind of have an incident and then kind of sweep it under the rug, it's going to come out. <laughs> and so the question is, how are you going to deal with it? And then how are you going to be perceived by your people in the organization, as well as the, the community, uh, key stakeholders? How are they going to, to perceive the way you handled it? Nobody expects perfection. Things happen. Human beings are messy. Organizations are messy and complex. Unfortunately, things happen but they do expect for them to be handled well. They do expect for people to be honest and transparent with how things are dealt with. And so services like yours are really important because it provides a mechanism for organizations to be able to, to proactively kind of stay on top of things rather than waiting for the, the ball to drop. And then all of a sudden they're just kind of you know, playing catch up and trying to do damage. Exactly. Control. That's exactly right. And and one thing that's interesting is when I started All Voices, I read the statistic that 75% of people who experience harassment in the workplace never speak up about it, never report it. And that's really staggering when you think about it, because that means that the company is only aware of that happening, you know, one in four times that it actually happens. So they're underestimating the severity of the situation in their workplace, right? They may be writing it off as, oh, this is just a one-off thing, or this is a bad actor, and not knowing that they may have a systemic issue at play within their company. Um, and so a big part of what we want to do is just increase the amount of real-time reporting um, as early as possible so that, to your point, companies can actually get ahead of these issues before they become widespread, um, and act proactively to address them. So um, I think that's a hugely important point. The other thing I would add is, you're right. The, the sort of um, what we're asking of companies and what we are accepting from them has really shifted since I think the Me Too movement. Um, but we also saw this past year with George Floyd's murder and anti-racism movement. Companies are being held accountable for what's happening you know, um, among their ranks, whether they are aware of it or not. And so knowing as much as possible is good for them because they're going to be held accountable uh, for it, regardless of whether they knew or didn't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you said a couple things, we'll get into the results here in just a moment, but uh, you said a couple things that should be no brainers, but maybe we can zoom in on a little bit um, because the anonymity piece, I think is so important. Uh, and to have an actual way to do that. So I've been at organizations where they they say there's an anonymous system, but then I've been in meetings with executives who then talk openly about the fact that they track the IP addresses of people who submit so they can go back to workstations and figure out who submitted what. I'm like, I, I don't know what they're thinking is going to happen when that gets out, <laughs> because obviously the, the, the trust uh, that is necessary for people to be willing to share those things that can negatively impact them, uh, it's going to be greatly diminished. Uh, I, I have personally um, 
pushed heavily back on certain organizational things that I've observed uh, in the past and been retaliated against. And so I know how hard it can be for people who, you know, they, they got a mortgage, they got kids going to college, they don't want to risk their benefits, they don't want to risk their, their um, paycheck because it's going to impact their whole family. And so people are, unless they feel safe, more often than not, people are going to come up with justifications and reasons for not speaking up and speaking out and highlighting things, even if they're the ones being directly hurt by it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting that you bring that up because um, one th one buzzword we were hearing a lot over the past year or so is like bystander reporting and how important that is to building a healthy culture and a psychologically safe culture for people of all backgrounds. But if you're a bystander and to your point, you have a mortgage, you have kids, you're probably even less incentivized to speak up because it didn't happen to you. And it's not, it may not be affecting you directly. Um, so there's all these like concepts that are put out there without regard for in reality, what's actually going to happen. What are people comfortable with? Um, are they willing to come forward? Do they fear retaliation. Um, and so we believe that if you give people the option to be anonymous and it has to be truly <laughs> anonymous, it can't be make believe anonymous. Um, you can start to see what people are actually comfortable disclosing. And it may be very different than what they're willing to say when they're in person, face to face or over zoom, um, having a conversation with someone from HR or with their manager. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, so let's dig into some of the results. Uh, you have intriguing questions. I'm I'm dying to find out more. Okay, great. Well, I think um, just to, to kind of double down on that point that we just discussed around anonymity, the key takeaway for me was that out of all of our findings, and they're all very interesting, um, was that it became very clear in looking at the results that the lack of anonymity historically has inhibited reporting of workplace wrongdoing. Um, and that 70% of respondents actually said they would be more likely to report if there was actually a truly anonymous method. So it has to be truly anonymous to your point. Um, but think about the sort of increase in insight, the ability to understand in real time what's happening with employees um, and the ability to take action that companies are missing out on by not offering an anonymous option to employees that employees actually trust that enables them to speak up. Um, we heard one anecdote uh, from someone who said that um, they submitted, you know, some feedback in an anonymous, quote unquote, anonymous culture survey. It was presented as anonymous. And then as she left the company, um, she was actually asked about that specific issue in her exit interview. And they said, we know that you experienced this. Is this part of why you're leaving? So I think it just goes to show there needs to be anonymity and it needs to be perceived as anonymous. And those two things both must be true. Um, it can't just be something that the company is describing as confidential or kind of like pretending is anonymous and isn't actually. So with all voices, when we go into a new company, we actually join, you know, the lunch and learn or the all hands or wherever they're announcing the, the use of this tool. We talk about the importance of anonymous reporting. We're going to start using that statistic, by the way, about the 70% now that we um, have the data to back it up. It's, it's definitely what we always hypothesize, but now we can actually share that as, as fact. Um, and explain to employees, we are actually prioritizing your anonymity. Here's how we do that within our system. Um, and here's why we believe in it so strongly. That's so interesting. Um, and I, I'm so glad that you're going to be able to, to have the meat behind, you know, that hypothesis and be able to talk about it. Um, what are some of the other key findings? If you had to boil it down to two or three things that you just felt like were the most you know, the things that really just stick out that organizations have to be paying attention to? So I think another big takeaway for me um, is that only half of the employees we surveyed um, knew how to report workplace wrongdoing. So um, let's say that you witnessed your work and you witnessed something. Um, 
there's only a 50 50 chance that you if you're a part of this you know survey population which we assume is representative um only half of you would know what to do know who to tell know how to access these resources whether it's um, a specific person in hr that you're supposed to talk to or a system that you're supposed to use so think about the fact that so many people are already hesitant to report if they're not given an anonymous option then let's say that 30 percent is like well i'm willing to come forward and i'm willing to share only 15 percent of them probably even know how to do so and so that i think to me that even that reflects that the, the the number of people who want to speak up and then can speak up is becoming so small it's so limited um and so that's another issue that companies have to kind of get in front of which is how do you communicate with employees about what to do when they see something or they're a part of something um, that they believe is wrong or that they believe someone needs to step in and change or fix um and make it very clear i i believe there should be an anonymous option but even if they don't have an anonymous option, they need to make it very clear what employees can and should do once something like that happens. Um, so that was another, that was a pretty shocking statistic to me that, you know, my, my hypothesis beforehand was actually that many more people would know what to do to report. They just wouldn't feel comfortable. And what we're seeing is they're not comfortable and they don't know what they to do. They just don't even know that. Yep. Yeah. And that's, it's not surprising to me, um, you know, being in the HR space and Title IX and sexual harassment stuff, like those types of issues, um, it seems like whenever they come up, people are always, and, and it's the it's the individual who actually is experiencing it um, usually doesn't know. And, and so then they're like asking around, trying to figure out, okay, now what do I do? Because I just experienced this thing. They're already so, you know, nervous about everything because they've just dealt with this trauma and now they're trying to like navigate the organizational complexities of, of everything and the politics that could be involved as they're asking around and people are are catching wind of, of what may have happened or what they're claiming it may have happened and it, we just need to be so crystal clear on these processes and we need to communicate them regularly so everyone uh can feel empowered to to speak up, to speak out. And to your point earlier, like not just the victims, not just the people that are experiencing it, but the bystanders, the people who observe need to be able to, it needs to be so easy for them to be able to, to share. And if it's not easy and if they don't know how to do it, then of course they're not going to report. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are so many barriers um, to reporting. And so the more that companies can take away those barriers, take away those fears, take away those logistical barriers, um, such as not even knowing who to talk to or where to go, the better. Um, the last uh, point that I wanted to bring up was out of the very tiny fraction of people who do report issues um, and are comfortable doing so, um, what we found was that one third of those people said, that they reported something, but it was never resolved, which means that the next time something happens, those people and probably anyone else that they tell about their experience is going to say, well, then why bother? What's the point? Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we think about when we work with our customers. We want to make sure our customers are successful in the way that they're using our platform. We really want to make sure that they know. Um, number one, to communicate back to employees. So no matter what comes out of the investigation or um, the, the kind of work that you do to address the issue, just communicate about it with employees. Even if the resolution is, thank you, we're taking this under advisement, we're probably going to do a training around um, unconscious bias in the future or a training around um, respectful use of you know, Slack and online platforms just say that you don't have to schedule the training that day you don't have to jump into action you know immediately but telling someone that they've been heard and that their input is being considered and is going to be a part of you know decisions that you make in the future around policies and practices and training that communication is so um, valuable and it makes people feel like they do have a voice in their organization and 
And that's what you should want because the more they feel that way, the more engaged they'll be, the more productive they'll be, the more likely they'll be to stay at the company and, and continue working. And that's why there's so much emphasis on this concept of employee engagement. But I think what's been missing over time is it's not just about perks and, you know, um, employees telling you week to week, you know, I have a happy face or I have a sad face this week. It's really like, what is going on with each employee? What are the issues that are, you know, creating potentially barriers to them um, being able to do their jobs and being productive and happy and healthy at work? Um, and once you understand those things, I think then you can start to think about perks and you can start to think about, you know, optimizing. But there's yeah. some pretty serious root issues that if you don't address, people will disengage and people will leave. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's simplistic, but you can think back to Maslow's hierarchy and you got to meet those foundational pieces first. Um, you have to meet those needs and there has to be psychological safety in the workplace before you can ever get to empowerment and engagement and uh, fulfillment and, and those other higher level types of motivations uh, and drivers for individuals. Uh, so that, that's absolutely true. Wonderful. Um, I, so I encourage listeners to, to check out All Voices, um, check out this report uh, and, and get into dig into the details on the report because I think it's just so fascinating and it'll be so helpful uh, for everyone as you're, as you're thinking about what you can do better within your organizations. Uh, the other piece of this that I wanted to at least tease and spend a little bit of time on is the employee feedback report. And that will be coming out here in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm not sure how much you're willing to share, but uh, please, anything that you're, you're um, able to share at this point without letting the cat out of the bag completely, um, what, what are you finding from this employee feedback report? Yeah, I'm happy to share a few, a few teasers. So um, this first survey that we did was in the, in the report that we, we built out of that data um, was about more serious issues, right? Wrongdoing. Um, this could be like witnessing someone committing fraud. It could be harassment, mistreatment. And those are all important. And at the same time, um, our platform enables people to share feedback about any topic and to share positive feedback, constructive feedback, um, ask questions. And I think, you know, when we launched our tool, we only kind of focused on the more serious issues. But what we were hearing over time from our customers is, it's funny, but people are submitting feedback about things we would have never thought they would need to be anonymous to share, right? Um, one example one customer gave us was uh, someone literally used all voices anonymously to say, do we have a maternity leave program, right? You can understand why someone would want to ask that anonymously, but yet that's not really on the top of people's minds when they think about like, what would someone use an anonymous <laughs> tool to ask, to ask questions about or share? Um, so we really quickly realized we needed to expand out to all types of feedback because employees are not delineating between, okay, well, this is serious. So we'll go to all voices and this is not serious. So I can't use all voices, but I don't want to come forward about it anyway. So, well, and, and just to, to that point, depending on the culture of the company, there can be all sorts of behind the scenes politics going on you know, as to why someone wouldn't want to come forward to, to ask questions about a whole range of things, right? Just because mm -hmm. it, all of a sudden they could be perceived, uh, you know, as, you know, not being a team player or, oh, there's this promotion coming up, but this person's planning on taking maternity leave. And, you know, so all of a sudden these legally protected statuses um, start to influence decisions. And people, of course, are going to be nervous about that, especially if, their, their company doesn't have a reputation or, you know, a, a track record of being a, you know, a psychologically safe uh, and positive empowerment kind of a culture organization. Um, so that's not surprising to me. Yep. And even when they are, right, we work with some of the companies that have the best reputations in the world on culture. There still might be people within, you know, no employee base is uniform, right? There might be people within that company that don't feel comfortable asking about something that someone else would feel completely comfortable asking about. So it's also about, that's part of why we're called all voices. It's like kind of democratizing access um, to leadership and giving every single person an equal ability to speak up. Um, 
but so I don't want to um, tease this for too long. So we did a survey about employee feedback more broadly. Um, and we asked about, you know, does your company have a feedback program in place? What does that look like? Um, have you submitted feedback through it? If not, why not? Um, we also asked about anonymity for this type of feedback. And so one thing that I thought was fascinating is that if you remember on the workplace wrongdoing report, 70% of people said they would be more willing to share, um, you know, a report if it could be anonymous. Um, that number actually jumped up as it related to feedback. So more people said that they would be more likely to share feedback if it was, if it could be hundred percent anonymous. So it was actually 73.8% of employees who said that in this case. So I just think that goes to show kind of to your point, um, it depends on the organization. It depends on the circumstances. It depends on that person's specific level of comfort, but we need to create anonymous ways for people to speak up about all types of issues and not just the most serious. And I think this is relevant because a lot of companies only have in place a whistleblower hotline. And as you know, a whistleblower hotline is really intended for very serious issues, illegal issues or likely illegal issues, um, and is intended to deal with, you know, um, financial compliance and, and kind of like financial misdeeds, like embezzlement. And so an employee is not going to go to a whistleblower hotline and say, hey, I'm just like feeling weird about a comment that was made at the all hands meeting, because obviously that's not illegal. <laughs> um, they probably don't consider themselves a whistleblower. And yet that's so important to that person to find a way to be heard. Um, and there's a lot of sort of repercussions that can happen if they aren't heard. So I think that that 73.8% stat surprised me a bit, but also when I really thought about it, it didn't. Yeah. And that's interesting. And I, I have some personal experience with that as well, where, um, where I've reported things because there was no other mechanism. So I reported things on a whistleblower hotline a couple of times at a particular organization. Um, it wasn't illegal, but um, from my estimation, it was clearly um, an ethical and moral issue, um, some exploitation that was occurring. And, you know, it's it, it, absolutely, they didn't know what to do with it. Like, so I, I end up, um, it was supposed to be anonymous. Of course it wasn't. And then uh, I have someone from HR reach out to me and they start asking questions. And, you know, we, so we go down that path and, and ultimately nothing happened. And they, they just, they dismissed it. They determined, well, no, this isn't what this is for. I'm like, okay, that's not what it's for. I still have these concerns. Uh, they're still not being addressed. <laughs> and, and, you know, it just, it just caused me to lose a lot of faith and trust in the leadership of that organization, whether, you know, they were trying to be proactive about dealing with the issue. Maybe they were completely aware of what I had talked, uh, shared, and they were already trying to work on it, but, but they didn't do anything to try to help me understand that. Um, and all I could see is, you know, this press in my mind, a very, very pressing concern. So I think to your point, we just having these mechanisms in place is so important. I don't know why an organization wouldn't want these types of tools so that they can keep their finger on the pulse of their people. That's like one of the biggest things I hear from leaders all the time. I don't, you know, they're separated, they're in a bubble and they, they often get surrounded by yes men, yes women, you know, and, and sycophant syndrome. And you have like these things that whether it's their intention or not, they get isolated and they don't know what's going on with the rank and file and with the line employees oftentimes. Even if they think they're in tune, they're usually not. <laughs> and so you have to have mechanisms in place for this kind of feedback. Otherwise, you're going to be making a lot of decisions and strategic approach. You're going to take strategic approaches that aren't going to be well, aren't going to be in line well, or at least not understood well by the people within the organization. So I, I, I uh, commend you for all the good work that, uh, that you're doing at All Voices. I encourage listeners to check out both the Workplace Wrongdoing Report and the, the Employee Feedback Report when it's released in a couple of weeks. Um, before we close, I, I, I recognize we're, we're low on time and I wanna be respectful of your time. Before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about All Voices, uh, and then just give us the final word on the topic. Yeah, I mean, um, before I close, I will I will share two other um, data points with you. Um, 
just given what you just shared, um, I think it's pretty relevant. So, um, 62% of employees that we surveyed said that they believe if they shared critical feedback with their employer, that there would be either no change or just incremental change. And that jumps up to 70% if you just look at mid-level employees. So I think what you just expressed is really reflective of how most people feel and, and what most people have experienced, which is that um, as it relates to feedback in particular, not wrongdoing and more serious issues, um, even fewer people believe that action would be taken um, of any significance if they were to report something. So you could argue that they're even less likely to speak up um, about, you know, these smaller scale issues that can still be really important um, to them. And then, as you said, it can affect their ability to have trust in their leadership overall. It, it can go from something kind of contained to something much bigger once they see that they're not being responded to or they're not being heard. And the other stat is 60% um, of employees said they've uh, either left or considered leaving their company just because they felt like they weren't being listened to. So if you care about employee retention, especially keeping, you know, great people, um, you should really be thinking about that number because that is a lot of people. That's the majority of your employees have probably thought about leaving or have left because of not being heard. So um, the solution, at least, you know, part of the solution can be really simple, which is like provides safer ways for people to speak up, which we now know includes anonymity as an option at least, um, and then communicate back to them that they've been heard. And that can, I think, solve, you know, 80% of, of problems out there. I'm just making up that number, but um, I think that will <laughs> 80, go eight, When we don't know the actual statistic, 80% is <laughs> always the go-to, right? Yes, exactly. Um, so if you want to learn more about All Voices, um, we'll be publishing these reports on our site. We have a blog with lots of really great info. Um, just go to allvoices.co and you can um, request a demo of the product. You can learn more about it. Um, you can subscribe to our email list and join our webinars. So we're trying to do a lot to kind of spread the word um, and educate people and, and also learn from experts in uh, DEI and HR and legal and compliance um, and share that back out with our audience. So um, check out our website. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's that's all I can say. We're on LinkedIn and, and Twitter and Instagram and all the social media platforms as well. But our, our website is probably the best place to go um, regardless. And the actually, the last thing I'll say is we do have um, a tool for the public. So from very early on, we knew how important it was for employees to be able to speak up um, about issues, even if their company was not currently a customer of ours. Um, so we created a, a sort of um, completely free kind of employee facing tool. So if you go to allvoices.co slash report, um, you can actually share feedback directly with your company, even if your company is not signed up with us yet. We'll pass that along for you. Um, and we'll encourage your company to potentially start using a tool like ours so that people like you will have a, a sort of consistent way to speak up and to share feedback with, with them. Excellent. Thank you, Claire. It has just been a pleasure talking with you. Uh, fun to learn about um, the resources that you are producing and providing at All Voices. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, check out the reports, check out the service that All Voices can provide. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.